Hello, my name is Neelam Koshya and I'm a Principal Solutions Architect at AWS. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through how we can use Amazon SageMaker Jumpstart to easily fine tune a large language text generation model on a domain specific data set. In the same way, you would train and deploy any model on Amazon SageMaker. In this example, we'll be fine tuning the GPT-J6B model on a domain specific data set. Um, the domain that we are looking at this, in this particular example is the financial domain. Let's take a look at this particular model in the Hugging Face repo. So this particular model is a transformer model. And the task that is does is generating text from a prompt. So what we're going to do is we're going to run an inference on this particular model without any fine tuning. And then we will fine tune is this particular model on the publicly available SEC filings of Amazon from the year 2021 and 2022. And then we, the expectation is that after fine tuning, the model will be able to generate insightful data for the financial domain. And then we will compare the results from before fine tuning and after fine tuning. So we're just going to uh, git clone this particular example, which is available example notebook, which is available in Amazon SageMaker examples. So here's the notebook. So in SageMaker Studio, so we are going to do the regular housekeeping items like pip install, upgrade the SageMaker, import all the necessary libraries that are required. Um, we will define the variables for the IAM role, the region, and the session for the SageMaker object. Over here, we will be defining the model ID and the model version as star. So star means the latest one and model ID is for the hugging phase 6 GPT J6P. And if you were to do this for any other example, you can always go to our public documentation and you can look at the model ID, the latest version, whether it's fine tunable or not, what problem it's trying to solve, and more details about the algorithm. So coming back here. So over here, we will be first retrieving the, the inference Docker container URI. Then we will retrieve the model URI based on the model ID and the version is star. So it will blow the latest version. Then we would create a SageMaker model instance and pass in the image URI, model URI, the role, the predictor, and the endpoint name that we have defined over here. And then once we have that, we will be doing the dot deploy method and we'll be leveraging the GPU instance here, G512XLarge, to host the model. Now for running the inference, these are the three examples. The question number one is this form 10K report shows that we serve the customers through and our vision is, let's see how the model responds to this. So if you look at the response, this form 10K report shows that, and it talks about our directors, it talks about random details like simply warehouse.com, and then, you know, keeps on, um, talking about the different items available, etc. And then let's scroll down and see our vision. So over here, our vision, it says to connect the internet of everything in every home, every workplace. And, you know, it goes on and it talks about the founder of Cisco, etc. And then the last question is, we are creating this future and it talks you know, about other stuff related to the internet of things. Now we have this as a baseline, right? Now let's take this model and see how we can fine tune this model on a custom data set on the SEC filing for Amazon. The sample text file that is used for fine tuning would look something like this. So, and then you can, you know, download more details from the SEC website and it's available in this particular notebook, the links, so you can you know, look at it. So first step, we will be retrieving the training artifacts. 
So th- when I say training artifact, it means the, the Docker container, the training algorithm source, the predefined, the pre-trained model, and a Python dictionary of the training hyperparameter that the algorithm accepts with their default values. So we will be training on a GPU instance, and we will be retrieving the, the training image for that particular model, and then the latest version of that. And then once we have that, we will be retrieving all the training scripts and the pre-trained model tarball to further fine tune that. Then we will be setting the training parameters. So the, the training part, the S3 part, the validation S3 part, and then output bucket wherein all the output artifact like the model. So output location where the model artifact, which is the output of this particular training process will be placed in. Uh, and then we will be defining the training hyperparameters. Three epochs and then four as the per device train batch size. And we will be performing the automatic model tuning, also called as the hyperparameter tuning. And we will be set in setting the objective matrix over here. And want to minimize the loss. And then we will be also setting the learning rate and the scaling type, which is the logarithmic sane size. The max job is six and the max parallel job two. And then we will be defining the estimator object, passing in all these parameters. Note the entry point is the transfer learning.python. And then we will be calling the dot with method. Now you can see the output, the output is pretty verbose, but just wanted to take a moment to mention that the Jumpstart uses the SageMaker Hugging Face Deep Learning Container, also known as DLC and the Deep Speed Library to fine tune the model. Now the Deep Speed is library is designed to reduce the computing power and memory use and to train large distributed models with better parallelism on existing computer hardware. And, and here is the, the hugging face training containers that we are going to use for doing the fine tuning. With Jumpstart, you can integrate the deep speed libraries with the SageMaker Hugging Face DLC and it will take everything in the in the background, including the single node distributed training, utilizing gradient checkpoints and model parallelism to train the model. So you can easily find to the model on the domain specific data set without having to manually set all, you know, all those parameters yourself. So the, the training goes on. And it took me these many seconds to train the, the model. And over here, we will extract the training performance, uh, look at the training loss and evaluation loss here, some of the matrix here. And then over here, once now that our model is ready, we will be deploying the model. We will be using the same G512 extra large, the GPU. And then we'll be using the same three examples. And if you look at the response from the fine tuned model is pretty good, right? Uh, it talks about the form 10K report and talks in details about that in line with the financial domain and the SEC data that we share. Um, we serve the customer through and it talks about amazon.com, it talks about AWS. It talks about Kindle. If you look at the vision, the vision is pretty accurate to be the most trusted and pre preferred retailer in the world. 
um, if you compare the results between between before and after, it's pretty clear the model is definitely performing very well. And in order to look into more details, uh, whenever we are having a LLM model, the way we do model evaluation is leveraging the PPL or perplexity. And if you look at the CloudWatch matrix, you can see the perplexity before is 8.17 and after fine tuning is 1.47. So it is improved greatly. So it was pretty simple. You can you can get started with this yourself and fine tune text generation model for your own data set today. Thank you.